good evening, everybody. Welcome to I love your laugh property too. and um, budget meeting combined meeting. Uh, it is March 23rd, 2023. Uh, this evening, we have um, two meetings that are going to go uh, back to back. We're going to start off with property first and then uh, move, transition over to budget. Um, with that said, I'm going to turn the floor over to Dr. B. Coates, who's going to start us off this evening with uh, our first component in our agenda, Renewing America's Schools. Good evening, everyone. Um, I believe Mr. Kaufman is going to pull up the presentation. Uh, this evening, we have the opportunity to share information with the board members, as well as with those who are attending tonight. And I just want to thank everyone um, for being here. And I want to get directly to um, the first item that we have. Um, most of you know, if we could just move the slide, please. Most of us know that um, we had an opportunity to apply for a grant under Renewing America Schools. And um, joining me tonight is Mike Kelly from KCBA. And we should also have Diane Heron. I do not see her as a um, participant yet, nor do I see her in the attendees, but I'm sure she will be with us. She's representing Practical Energy Solutions. And these are the two uh, organizations that worked with us to submit, if you will, part one of the grant. So the first part of the grant, um, we had to submit a concept paper. And on the next slide, we actually have, I believe, a link to the concept papers. And what I want to do is just really draw your attention quickly to what we've done. And so the thinking was that given where we are with our Long Range School Facilities Master Plan and what projects were currently in place, the grant allowed us to put information in place about upcoming projects. So when we looked at the next two projects that were coming up, it is the um, Penwood Cypress as well as uh, Penwood High School. So the first concept paper is for Penwood Cypress. And as you can imagine, it says renewing America's school. So it's about energy and how do we conserve energy with the new buildings or the improvements that we, are, that we will be making. So on the next page, I just wanna really draw your attention to um, section three, which is a draft cost estimate of what we've provided to the federal government. So this grant is for about $7.2 million and it really addresses energy, mechanical, uh, electrical, et cetera, types of things that we would want to improve. And so again, Practical Energy Solutions, as well as KCBA and myself work together to, to develop the concept paper. So that's the first concept paper. And we specifically put two, made the two projects separate. So the next concept paper, if you just continue to scroll forward and go to the next page, you will see that this one is for the high school, Penwood, um, Greenwood Avenue campus. And so in this project, it's about $14.9 million. And you will see again, the major components are mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire, et cetera. So um, we were informed after completing part one and submitting it that the concept papers were approved. So as a result of the concept papers being approved, we're now in a position where we have to actually submit the full application. The full application deadline is April the 21st. And I do want to highlight for you a couple of items in the application. Now, the caveat with this application is the following. In order to receive the dollars that I just highlighted for you, we have to commit to continue with the project. So we would receive the money as the project gets completed. Um, so our project, of, or our progress, if you will, to this project is tied to receipt of the dollars. Um, and really tonight, the purpose is to ensure that the board of directors um, still would want us to continue to move forward with this particular project. So in the application, I just want to point out a couple of things to you. Um, on page two of eight, it basically outlines the project overview. We've basically done most of that work. I've described um, for you generally what, what the projects are about, Cypress Street and then the high school. Um, if you go forward the um, next page, there's a statement of need. So in this section, we keep going. We actually talked about the community need, facility needs, and a lot of this information we've already completed. You can keep going. The third section talks about benefits and impact. And I want to pause here for a moment and just highlight some of the sections. 
One is community and labor engagement. So the uh, federal government wants us to have plans to engage with labor unions, um, local governments and community stakeholders. So I think we've done some things since we've been on this long range school facilities master plan journey to uh, try to engage more labor unions. And so the preliminary work that we're doing with the RCO, the Responsible Contract Ordinance, will definitely help us in terms of achieving some points in this particular section. If you go down to um, that section right there, three points, I'm sorry, 1.8.2.1 talks about workforce um, attraction, training, and recruitment. A lot of those things are, um, are addressed, if you will, in the draft RCO that we have. Keep going, please. The next section within the same um, subcomponent, if you will, which is benefits and impact, um, we talk about, go up a little bit more for me, I apologize, right there. We talk about collective bargaining. So again, working with labor organizations. In 1.8.3, you have here diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. Keep in mind that our board did approve an MWBE policy. So again, that's something that we're doing that's moving us in the right direction. Um, not only for what we want to do as a community, but as it relates to this particular grant as well. And then the last section talks about innovation and scalability. So what you will note here is that they're looking for project innovation. Uh, we, they want us to talk about partnerships that we may have or partnerships that we would expand. So three partnerships come to mind that we have, or at least two. Um, the work that we do with Young Men and Women Incorporated, which is tied directly to STEAM. We have... Um, Ramp Up to STEAM, which is a grant that we have, and that's a partnership with Delaware County Community College, Delaware County Intermediate Unit, um, and an external organization. And so these are projects that we can speak to and talk about and highlight, they, and, and highlight how they will continue to move us forward with the work that we're doing in these two schools. And then the other project, um, partnership, excuse me, is Project Lead the Way, which is a STEM-based project that really starts in middle school and it is aligned with the pathways that we have been talking about at our high school level. So that gives you a synopsis, if you will, of the actual project itself, the grant. And now what I would like to do is transition to Mike and then we'll open it up for questions to talk about how the work with KCBA ties into what we have to do and then what we are going to submit in the application. So Mike, you can take it from here, please. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, hope everybody's doing well. If you want to uh, jump over to some of the slides that we had shared. Um, uh, looking at the long range plan, you know, we've, we've been looking in the past for uh, Kerr Field, um, East Lansdowne and Evans. All, those are all moving ahead. Uh, the one from that, that one part that, that hasn't moved forward yet is Bell Ave, and that can be a, a discussion for uh, for later, but essentially this next phase of things that we're talking about and the opportunities that are now uh, presented themselves, as Dr. Bicos had mentioned, is the ninth grade uh, addition at Green Ave and the renovation at Cypress. So if you want to go to the, the next slide there, um, we're continuing with the grant application that is due uh, April 21st, I believe. Uh, within that are a request for some images. So I'm going to get to that in a minute. Um, but we're essentially saying, uh, as, as Dr. B. Coates had mentioned, to begin architectural and building engineering design. Um, so we're not, you know, we're not uh, putting a shovel in the ground or anything, but we are starting to move ahead with um, designing of the project. Uh, we've talked about additions. Uh, we haven't really nailed down what's in those additions or where they are. Um, is, are the additions the new front door of the building? Is is that um, a ninth grade center at, at um, Green Avenue at the high school? Uh, is that a STEM center addition at, uh, for the middle school at Cyprus? Um, what do we even call Cyprus when it uh, opens up, uh, uh, reopens as a middle school? So we thought there needs to be um, a group, a small group that could get together to create a building committee to review those types of, again, big, big picture options um, for at both of those uh, locations. Again, we've kind of even internally in our office debated about where where additions should be and, and what would be uh, would be best. So we would suggest small committees, um, uh, preferably with uh, the principals of those schools um, and, and some curriculum leaders there. Uh, an engineering survey would need to be done at, at Green Avenue campus. 
um, and certainly beginning to engage some of the local municipalities, just like we did at East Lansdowne and Evans, uh, as we talk about these projects, just to make sure that um, you know they're aware uh, as a courtesy of what's going on and, and certainly find out if there's any uh, impediments about any of the things we're talking about. So keep going. Um, we can kind of show the, the timeline there. We're saying between April and September is kind of a preliminary design. Uh, again, just very high level design ideas. Um, that's what um, would be um, the district would be committing to and getting started with. As I mentioned, submitting the grant in April. Um, and then at that time, we would be uh, reviewing uh, some of the scope and, and design options for both projects. Um, if that goes well, if the grants come in successful, um, the board would then consider moving ahead with actually doing the projects, the construction and, and completing uh, construction documentation. So that's all the blueprints and all the things that we use for, for bidding. Two projects, one's going to take a lot longer than the other. So Green Ave would get started first, um, October of, uh, of this year, wrapping up in the summer. The idea of bidding the project next summer uh, and construction starting next fall and going through June of 27. And if you go to the next slide, that focuses a little bit more on um, the ninth grade center or Cypress. Uh, Cypress would start construction and, and their documentation a little bit after that. Um, but again, both uh, the thoughts that, that both of those projects would conclude in uh, the summer of 2027. It'll be here before you know it. Um, and uh, then that would provide the ability for the district to be moving ninth grade into Green Ave and, and sixth grade into uh, what would be essentially two middle schools. Um, as it pertains to the application, the grant application, um, money has to be committed um, by um, 2026. So in both of these scenarios, even with Cypress about a year behind the uh, Green Ave building, um, both uh, were, were committing that money um, before uh, 2026. So the last piece we had there was um, two quick concept designs. And again, this is where it sits today. Um, there was an idea of an addition over in the practice field across uh, from the Green Ave High School that would bridge over Green Ave. We don't want to close that, that area, um, add some additional parking. You know, we kind of, um, part of the discussion and without getting into the whole thing was, you know, do, do we keep the, the field on the left that says new turf field over there? Do you want to keep the field on the right? Do we want to keep the district office or move that? So obviously there's a lot of questions um, that would be part of that building committee. But in the meantime, we can start to show some images for the purposes of the application that shows something similar to this, you know, a large addition, uh, in this case, kind of a, um, almost a standalone building with a little bit of a bridge that connects to the high school. And if you go to the last slide there, that was Cypress. Um, here we're saying, check my audio device. I think the one you just showed, Mike, was Green Avenue. This one right here would be Cypress. Yes, um, here is uh, Cypress. This was an idea of a building, uh, an addition in the rear of the school that may actually take away that, um, that modular trailer that's sitting there uh, and actually link to the gym addition. If you know, if, uh, you know that building well, the, the gym is actually not physically connected to uh, the existing school. So this little blue guy there um, would connect that. There was an idea of maybe extending the uh, the alleyway to create a little bit of a parking lot in front. Um, we, I can tell you just since yesterday, we've redesigned this three other times to, to look at some other options of trying to keep uh, some more green space there. But these kind of concepts is where we're starting. Um, we certainly want to develop them further, but you know this would be ripe for the conversation for that building committee. Okay, thank you very much. I believe that's uh, what we wanted to share tonight. I would ask that we take the screen share off and open it up for some discussions. I believe Diane Heron is um, on the Zoom. Hi, Diane, I see you. Um, I just wanted to make sure that our board members got to see you. And then again, Diane has been very instrumental in the writing and the work that we've been doing. So all three of us are available to address any questions that you may have um, at this particular point. And Jan, I guess I'll turn it back to you to lead us through that discussion. And then Bob, you can continue on with the agenda. Thank you, Dr. Decoats. And I, again, I'll open the floor to the board members. 
uh, if they have any questions for Dr. V. Coates, M Mr. Kelly, or Ms. Heron. Jen, I think you, yeah, are, um, you're, you were muted. I was just going to say very exciting. Awesome. It's to do, but very exciting. Okay. Bill, I think I heard you. Did you have yeah. something to share? So do these plans mesh with the previous plans for HVAC and ADH, ADA work? I yeah, mean, so in both in both scenarios, um, we're talking about um, pretty extensive renovations at, at the at Green Ave and at Cypress. Um, part of the application process, it's it's all about renewing uh, school buildings. So uh, as Diane and her team have have done a terrific job of helping um, uh, narrate some of the MEP and mechanical electrical plumbing upgrades that would be considered some of the environmentally friendly. Uh, sustainable uh, moves that would be uh, uh, vital to the project as well. Um, certainly all things ADA compliance um, uh, and bringing these buildings essentially up to um, you know, brand new status. Uh, obviously there's a large addition onto the, the ninth grade, um, I'm sorry, the ninth grade addition onto the Green Ave campus. Um, you know, that, that building is uh, 120,000 square feet um, onto 140,000 square foot buildings. So we're almost rebuilding an entire high school there. Um, so it's quite a large addition and certainly everything there would be, um, uh, the focus there would be for uh, some very uh, robust, uh, sustainable uh, goals there. So since part of this messes with that, uh, in effect, it would be saving us money on the grant from work that we would previously had approved or allocated to be done at those two sites in terms of ADA and uh, uh, HVAC and infrastructure work. Yeah, I mean, both of these grants are sizable. Um, uh, it, it's federal money. Um, it's certainly not open to, um, to everybody. And, and so uh, the, the application process that the team has done to date is, is uh, uh, tremendous to get to this next phase, and and certainly, um, if if both grants were awarded, that's that's a sizable amount of money um, to be uh, um, be investing, reinvesting in in those buildings. I agree. Thank you, Mike. Hey, yes. Mike. This is George. Sorry for the dark the darkness. I don't have light somewhere. Um, I got a question on your presentation regarding Bell Avenue, and I apologize, I'm, I haven't done my homework. So for those who already know the answer, I'm sorry. But why aren't we doing anything with Bell right now? That can certainly happen. That has not been, um, uh, we have not moved ahead with that uh, just from the board direction. I know there's been conversation of that kind of back and forth a bit and um, that had never uh, that had never been pushed forward. The money has not been approved, Joy. That's the bottom line. We don't have money to do Bell Avenue, so we have to allot money, identify where the source is, in order to do the work at Bell. Thank you, uh, Jen. I uh, yeah, thank you. I I just want to be mindful um, that when we go to the high school Green Avenue that we're mindful to fix the problems in the original building also. Still some rooms with carpet, doors. Um, there's a lot of, uh, you know, hiding spots in that building and we should, you know, be mindful to, to try to uh, you know, fix them and stuff like that. Bring it up to snuff. Yeah, one of the big advantages of building such a large addition right next to that um, that addition, the, the goal is that addition will be done a year before um, you're moving students in there. That gives us a year to move existing 10th, 11th, and 12th graders in there um, so that we can do heavy renovations and, part and portions of the existing building um, and move kids out. Uh, so, um, yeah, that, that uh, you know, a, a full renovation, an extensive renovation in the existing building is planned. Okay. Any other questions from the board members before I open it up to the floor? So, yes, lastly, go ahead, go ahead, Luella. So, is this my understanding that this grant is just for the high school and the ninth grade academy? 
That is correct. And we so, have to essentially put up the money first and be reimbursed. Diana might ask you to help us with that. I don't think that's the way this is, but could you give us a little help on that one, please, if you could? Sure. The way the grant process works is that we need to submit a Absolutely. we need to submit a um, schedule with milestones in it, and provided we are meeting the schedule and doing everything we've outlined um, that we will do as part of the grant application process, uh, that's when the reimbursement comes in. So it's you don't have to finish the complete project um, to be reimbursed, but you do have to um, meet you know, a certain milestone and then you get reimbursed and then the next milestone you get reimbursed. And what are the potential pitfalls of that? Well, I think that there's the risk that the project um, changes scope substantially, in which case it would no longer meet the grant requirement, which is why it's just important to that everyone has agreement on what we've presented uh, in terms of the, particularly the mechanical engineering and plumbing systems that are going into the schools. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Ivory. Hi, I just have one question. In regards to the dollar amount that's being um, applied for, how much has anyone um, been able to identify how much would we be responsible for if we're in the process of doing the high school? How much would we be responsible for in terms of the dollar amount? So Ms. So Ms. Ivory, on one of the concept papers, it has an item here, and Diane, please chime in if I'm wrong, it says less than 5% match. So on one grant, it says 379,500, and that's for Cypress. And then for the Penwood um, High School, the 5% match is about 790,000. So those are the dollars that I'm looking at based upon uh, what we would have to put forward. But if I'm wrong, please correct me. Okay. So my, I guess, so my question is based on our facilities master plan on what was presented for what we would do for the high school, it doesn't include everything we plan. So if we are using that money how much money, I guess, I think Bill asked, how much money would we not have to spend if we wanted to do the entire high school project? I guess that's my question. And so I think the best way to answer that is these dollars would cover items related to mechanical, electrical, HVAC. Um, that's what the majority of the dollars would cover on both projects because these dollars are specific to a certain portion of the building project itself. Okay. And so they're listed right on the um, document on page two of the grant applications. I mean, right. on, on both of the concept papers, I'm yeah. sorry. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering how much off, far off we were if we were trying to complete the high school project altogether. Gotcha. How much would we have to be off? And I think we will identify and know what that amount is as we continue to do work. Um, that would definitely come back to the board and present it. Uh, I think the opportunity, I'm going to look at it as that. The opportunity here is um, we have somewhat of an early, of early deadline to receive these dollars, but we also don't want to miss the opportunity as well. Um, but we know that this will definitely be a cost savings to not only the board, but to our taxpayers. So I guess, uh, I, I, th I think what I'm hearing the question is, what is the what is the total amount for the grants so that, that what is the potential savings we're looking at if we go down this path? I think that's the question everyone is trying to ask. They're going around it funny. It's 14.5 million, which is listed on page two of the concept paper. And, and that's for the bigger project, which is Green Avenue. And then on Cypress, the amount is, I apologize, I'm flipping through pages here. Uh, it's about four point, I'm sorry, 7.2 million. Okay, thank you. Bill? Yeah, I, I, and I, I don't wanna sound cavalier about the money, I know that it's money, but 
most of the grants that I apply for for the borough and things like that have a 30% match. So if they're offering federal money at a 5% match, uh, get your application and run to the bank, run to these places <laughs> and, and make sure your chair is first like you're camping out. But uh, a 5% match, it's, 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 it's free money. I agree with you, Bill. I had to look at that at least five times before I truly believed it was only 5%. But it's right. I, mean, I, I just I just applied to uh, redo the sanitary line from on Baltimore Pike from Hearst to Baltimore Pike through a federal grant and my match is 30 percent so that's uh, uh, you know 320 for, from the borough you know on a 1.3 million dollar grant if you can get five percent of that run any other questions from board members All right, uh, and are there any attendees who have questions? Well, actually, I'm sorry, yeah, I have one more question. So uh, sure. with, the, with the match of the grant, um, in some instances, it's possible to apply for another grant to cover your match, is that correct? Um, I in some cases. In some yeah. cases, but I think in this case, uh, you can't match grant money with other federal grant money. But you can get state money to match your... I believe so. Yes. All right. Thank you. We can use PlanCon if it comes back. Yeah, uh, you okay. can use PlanCon if it comes back. I was just going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming. Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other questions from the public or from the board members? Just give them a moment to raise their hand if they have any. We have a hand raise. Miss Lewis. Hi, I put um, this question in the chat because I'm on my phone. Um, but I wanted to know if we had a plan yet to transition our kids to another facility, uh, and if if when it, during construction. We're too early for that, Miss Lewis. I did answer okay. that. In, I did answer that in the Q and A. But Sorry, my phone. Of, that's okay. No problem. We are ahead okay. of that. We're too early for that right now, but we will be developing one at the appropriate time. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Sure. You're welcome. All right. Any other questions regarding this topic before we move on? So Jan, I just want to make sure I'm clear since this is recorded. I just want to make sure it sounds like there is agreement for us to continue to move forward only because a lot of work is going to happen between now and the time that this is due in. And I'm thinking we would have another property meeting before, not necessarily just on this topic, but there is another property committee meeting Sorry, before, y before the 21st. Yeah, so let me, let, let's just poll the folks. I, I mean, I, 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 I think you're right, but let me poll them and um, give you a straw poll from here. Uh, I'm just gonna call out the board members that are on uh, at the moment, and I'm gonna call them across on my screen as I see them. Bill, do you think we should move forward? Absolutely. Jennifer? Yes. Ms. Hopkins? All right, Ms. Hopkins is away. We, we, I'll try again, back again. Ms. Richardson? Let's move forward, yes. Okay, Ms. Wadia? Yes, I'm okay with moving forward. Okay, and I, um, I'm gonna try Ms. Hopkins again. Ms. Hopkins? I'm sorry, I'm trying to fix something, but I'm I'm here and yes. Okay, awesome, and I'm a yes, so Dr. B. Coates, you, you, know, you have the majority of the group here uh, giving you the green light to move forward. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. And Diane, thank you so much for being here and I appreciate it. And if you have to log off, that's totally fine. I, we understand. Thank you. And I apologize for being late. I had some issues with my computer, so I hopped on my phone here. <laughs> no problem. We're glad thank you're here. You no, but I'm not alone because I'm doing the same thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Look thank forward you. to working with you. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right, and then that, because I guess we have another component within our presentation. I believe so. so. We have some updates to our facilities master plan. East Lansdowne and Evans, and I believe that is Mike. Turn the floor over to you, Mike. Sure, 
thank you again. Um, we have met with uh, all of the contractors uh, numerous times at East Lansdale and Evans. In fact, we're um, meeting with them every uh, weekly uh, over the last couple of weeks, but we'll start meeting every other week uh, as construction continues. Um, they will be starting construction in the schools over spring break. Um, this was an option that we had uh, spoken with uh, the faculty and staff there, as well as the principals. I believe we talked to you guys about that as well. Um, they're basically going to be removing ceiling tiles in a couple of different areas, um, corridors at um, Evans, and uh, a small strip of, of classroom ceiling tiles at East Lansdowne. Um, the reason for that is um, after Easter break and in through May, um, after hours, so essentially from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m., after kids are out of the buildings, um, contractors would be uh, able to be in the buildings running piping and wiring, taking out old piping, old wiring, nothing that's, that's needed, um, but starting to run a lot of the infrastructure um, for the big work that will be coming this summer. Uh, every one of them told us, you know, the more work we can get done before June 15th, um, the better chance we have to be out of there on August 15th. Um, so we have done this a lot with uh, other groups. Um, I don't know if the picture, is that the clickable thing? Is the picture from yep. Pensbury? There you go. That is what Pensbury Middle School looks like right now, Bain Middle School in Pensbury. Um, you know, if you if you put your hand up, it looks like a normal uh, hallway there, but uh, the ceiling's gone. Uh, and that's it. Um, so everything is safe. Everything is fine. Everything that anybody can touch is, is down low. Uh, the ceilings are gone. And after hours, they're running piping. They're taking uh, wiring and things like that. So I thought this was, uh, took this picture and thought this was a great example uh, of, of what they'll be seeing at um, Evans Elementary School at, um, I believe, uh, and then at East Lansdowne is where they're uh, going to be taking some ceiling uh, tile out of just one strip across where the um, where the uh, uh, in in the classroom right up uh, next to the uh, the chalkboard there or the teaching wall. So that um, again, everything is is uh, in full compliance. It's all still working, uh, but this allows uh, for contractors to be able to work uh, after hours. And we have um, had meetings, as, as Mike said, I just want to reiterate this, with each of the smaller committees at both elementary schools, which is inclusive of parents and teaching staff. Principals are, were requested to make sure that they inform their staff um, of this along with the picture so that when individuals return, students as well as staff are not surprised. We also did ask for this information to be sent home as well. Um, so that a student wouldn't show up and be like, hey, mom and dad, we don't have a ceiling. What's going on? So we just want to make sure that everyone is on the same page with us as we move along with these projects. Thanks, Mike. Oh, sounds good. Uh, again, it's been some uh, good meetings with uh, the group that's going to be uh, moving a lot of the furniture out of uh, Evans. Um, and uh, so a lot of that uh, pre-coordination is, is going on and things are things are moving ahead. Great. Um, the next item is a quick update on curve field. Uh, first, I wanted to show you the current aerial shot. Um, demolition and grading has started. Um, so if you drive by and, and look at curve field now, this is how it looks. Um, and Mike Rufo with Mid Atlantic has provided uh, quick updates on different areas right here. Um, all the permitting is is done. There's one item. Uh, open with the Aiden Barrow about um, the stormwater uh, fund contribution that uh, the district has to speak to the borough about, um, see if we can uh, negotiate or if we have to pay uh, full price for that. Um, construction, these are the items that they're working on. Building, um, there are still a lot of items that went out to bid last week. Um, nothing has been awarded since. Uh, so he's still advocating and, and once interest from local contractors to um, please still give him a call and they can still receive bid packages. Um, so if you know of anybody, please contact Mike Rufo um, if you're interested in the project. And and Bob, his information is on our website through the um, October presentation, correct? 
Yes. Um, and I believe I can send his cell phone number out to all the board members if they, if they need it, if they have anybody in mind that um, needs to get in contact with him. Thank you, Bob. Sure. Um, the next item on the agenda is the copy release. Um, this will be um, a motion, I believe, on the agenda for the um, board business meeting. Um, our current contract is up. Uh, the annual cost was about $72,800. Um, through the CoStars pricing, we're able to either look at a one-year one, one year extension or a four-year renewal with a, a whole new equipment refresh. The equipment refresh actually came in uh, slightly lower, about a 7% increase, which is lower than current infl inflation, um, comparable to um, market. So we feel that this is a uh, a good price, and we are recommending that this is the contract that we move forward with. And then that would be all we have for agenda items. I don't know if we want to open up for discussion, Jan, or... Yes, Bob, would you be able to put that slide back up with a yeah, sure. copier? And then I'm going to open up the floor to um, the board members regarding this just you know, are, are you okay with this moving forward? All right. Any, any comments from board members? All right. Seeing none, hearing none. I want to thank you for the, for your participation folks in the property meeting. And I'm going to turn the, the baton over to my colleague Jen Hoff for our budget meeting. Thank you very much, Mr. Tong. Uh, Bob, you want to take it away? Or whoever's doing the intro? Sure, I just have to get over to my other slide deck. Sorry about that. I want to thank uh, the citizens for being here and the attendees um, and the budget advisory committee uh, participants. Thank you so much. Uh, for being here this evening. Um, any and all feedback is welcomed. Yes, uh, thank you, everybody. Um, here's I'm our- sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Kaufman. Um, yeah. Everyone, uh, the deck is in the chat um, and uh, I'll, uh, I'll repeat it in case you got here late, but the deck with all the attachments is in the chat. There you go. Thank you. Take it away. Sure. Excuse, excuse me, Ms. Hoff. Could we maybe have the um, BAC members at least just introduce themselves? Yeah. There may be yeah. people here that may not know everyone. I think that For may sure. be helpful. Sure. And I don't have the list in front of me, Bob, so I'm not sure who has the list, but I've, I, I know that. Do okay, you can do it, Jennifer. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, Ms. Selk. From uh, Darby, can you say hello, please? Good evening, everyone. Glad to be a part of the team. Okay. Uh, Mr. Louie from uh, Lansdowne, can you say hello, please? Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank Ms. You Austin uh, from Yaden, can you say hello, please? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thank you so much for being here. And mm -hmm. on the phone, 267, who is that, please? downtown man eventually married an usher. 267, 236. Is that one of our BAC members? Is that Mr. Mormon? I don't know. All right. Uh, Bob, you can proceed. Thank you so much, everyone. Sure. So, so here's the listing of the, the BAC members in the um, slide deck. Uh, welcome. And we really appreciate you for participating in this process. Um, so tonight we're going to go through a quick overview of um, last year's financials, how we get to um, our budget composition, and kind of the current budget numbers that we know as of date um, to share with you. Um, so in November 20, on November 28th, 2022, the board approved the 23-24 budget calendar. Um, and as you see, 
Um, the objective is by June 26th to finalize and adopt our 2023-2024 budget um, with milestones in between to, to ensure we meet that date. So overall budget uh, composition, um, our goal is to match revenues to expenditures or, um, in order to not impact fund balance. Um, if we end up generating more revenue than expenditures, then we have an increase in fund balance, which is which is a, also a great thing. Um, our revenues are consist of local, state, and federal revenues. Um, the majority of our expenditures are related to instructional support services, non-instructional uh, services, and um, any debt services related to capital projects. For the 2021-2022 school year, um, the audited figures are on this slide. Uh, our local revenues were about $51 million and consist of you know, our local taxes, transfer tax, delinquent taxes, um, interest income, and, and a couple of other items that are minimal. Um, state revenues about $50 million, federal revenues of about $10.2 million, um, totaling to about $111 million. Um, this slide breaks down the state subsidy trend for the past five years. Um, as you can see, we've been trending upward in our BEF funding. Um, however, it hasn't been trending up enough to support, um, which is why we are advocating for more dollars. Um, and overall, our total state revenue has only gone up by about 800,000 since last year, or since 21, from 21 to 22, excuse me. Um, expenditure breakdown for instructional um, services, we, we spend about 77.3 million. Support services, 31 million. Non-instructional services, 1.5 million. And debt service related to capital projects, about 2.4 million uh, to total 112.4 million. Um, here's a breakdown percentage wise um, to give a, a different perspective. About 34% of our expenditures are related to salaries. 15% uh, related to charter schools, 12% uh, related to our pension benefit plan, and 9% um, to special education, and, and so on and so forth as you go down that list um, with a pie chart represent, representation as well. So now we're <clears throat> moving to local revenues. Hey Bob, can, yes. that was that was a lot of material. Does sure. anyone on the board or budget advisory committee have any questions on uh, what Bob just went through? Thank you. Does anyone in and welcome, Mr. Houston? Thanks for joining us this evening. Thank um, you. I appreciate it. Good to, good to hear you again. Um, does, uh, does anyone in attendees have any questions on the material presented so far? I just put a link to the deck for people that arrived later um, with uh, this presentation and attachments if you're interested. Okay, all set. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so now for the revenue side, um, current year tax revenues, we had budgeted about 46.6 million. As of March 15th, we've collected about 45.2 million, leaving a, a difference of 1.4 million. Um, comparatively to last year, we only had a difference of about 14,000. Um, so that, that 1.4 million um, will affect fund balance at the end of the year if it is not collected in delinquent tax um, by June 30th. Um, transfer taxes, again, we had budgeted about 460,000. Uh, we collected more than expected 550,000 for a difference of 90,000 um, in the positive. Um, you can see that's a slight decrease from last year. And all that really means is that there were there were less properties uh, sold in um, the district 
um, because we get, a, I believe, a half percent of the one percent tax charged on all sales. Delinquent taxes, we've got 4.1 million budgeted. We've collected 2.4 million as of March 15th uh, for a difference of about 1.67, 1.7 million. Um, it's a little bit greater than last year, uh, creating a, a lower percentage of collection of about 59.2%. Um, again, with that current tax being lower, um, hopefully we'll, we'll see some pickup towards the end of the year and uh, get a little bit closer to our target. Any questions on those slides? Yes, on that 1.4 million that says, um, the 1.4 million, is that a, that's on the lien list, right? So that is, what percentage of that do we get from media? So we get, all of what we were supposed to get, and then uh, media charges an interest penalty that they collect. Okay. But it's, it is included in that lien list, right? Correct. So as of February 21st, maybe, uh, we sent the lien list over to um, media um, and closed our books on real estate tax, current real estate taxes for the 2022 tax year. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ms. Richardson. And Bob, the the, uh, the delinquent. Yes. That just means we people have defaulted on their plans with the county, correct? So delinquent taxes, um, the first, so, even the taxes that were turned over on February 20th, if you pay the county, say tomorrow for the 2022 year, so only a month late, they would still come in as delinquent taxes. Okay. Um, and so it goes back, I believe, five years before they um, take other means to collect that money um, by either sheriff sale or it, it may be longer, maybe seven, five to seven. Okay. So that, that could be up to five years of outstanding taxes. How much is in fund balance right now? It's hard to say. Um, if, uh, if everything else goes to budget, then we should have an increase around 3 million. So that's in fund balance. Does that include the four million that we got in the budget? Before? Yes, because that would be reduced by oh excuse me, not three million, one point five million, because that would include the reduction, the difference between this delinquent tax and your current real estate. So if that if that money doesn't come in, that will impact the increase that we anticipated with that extra money that we did not budget. All right, so let me let me try a different way. How much was in fund balance when we closed June of 2022? 373,000. And so we closed our books. We did our budget. We got 4 million more than we thought we were. Yes. And you're saying so now so we're three million three hundred and thirty-seven thousand. If everything's perfect, it could be lower if we don't, because that delinquent tax number can still increase. I can't predict what it will be. That's why I'm hesitant to to put a strong number on it, mm -hmm. um, because in, if nobody pays on it, then it, as of today, you would only get a one million dollar increase right. if everything continued as of today at, at the rate that it's currently at. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any, any other questions or would we like to proceed to the next section? Seeing none, um, I'll move to 22, 23 expense summary. Um, so as of today, here are the, um, current expenses. 
um, including encumbrances and the available um, available funds. Um, as you can see on the line, instruction line, it says that there's a negative balance. However, I believe that's a lot of the ESSER money that wasn't included in the operating budget. Um, so it's a little deceiving. Um, so we're still in, in good shape to finish out the year. I guess before I move to the next section, are there any questions on, on this slide? Okay, so the next section would be 2022-23 budget items. Um, so here are the highlights of known <clears throat> reductions and increases that we're um, including in, in next year's budget projection. Uh, we have a 3% reduction in, in healthcare costs, um, which is going to be about 150000 uh, in savings. Uh, prescription costs are projected to increase by about 13%. Um, so that's about an increase of about 300,000. Uh, our M&O contract is up for renewal. Uh, currently, we're estimating a 6% increase. So it's about 200,000. Uh, same thing with our transportation contract, it's up for renewal. So we're also estimating a 6% increase, about 175,000. Uh, PISER's retirement rate, uh, that's a typo. It's actually a decrease from 35.26 to 34%. Um, so we expect to save about 325000 with that reduction. Um, and with contractual salary increases, we expect to pay about $1.8 million more in salaries next year. Um, below that is about a, contra uh, a distribution of employees per um, bargaining unit or meet and discuss group. And then we anticipate uh, an increase of about $2 million in, in charter school budget um, to get it more in line with kind of what we see coming in the last two years um, to get it to a more um, accurate number, excuse me. I know that was a lot. Um, um, Mr. Kaufman, just correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the contractual increase is is more this year than last because this year we do step and we only do step every two years. And this is one of those years. Sure. And and, and even without a, a step, it, it would still increase a little bit more each year because it would be compounding. Right. Do any school board directors have any questions? Do any BAC folks have any questions? Do any attendees have any questions? Okay, back to you. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, so the next slide, uh, based on the governor's budget that came out, what was it? March 8th, I believe, somewhere around that time, first week of March, second week of March, um, our proposed basic education funding was 33.6 million. Um, for the 22-23 year, uh, with the adjusted numbers, it looks like we're going to end up with 30.3 million, including level up. Um, for both of those items, they I combined them to make it more comparable. Um, the proposed special education funding is about 6.5 million compared to the 5.8 million last year. Um, so there were increases. Uh, the base increase for basic education funding was only 8%, which was just to keep up with inflation. Um, so we got a slight, a little bit more than that, but not much. Oh, actually, I'll pause there in case anybody has a question on, on those items, because the, the next is kind of forward thinking. Yep. Any questions from school board directors? I have one of the advisory committee members saying that they couldn't log on, but they wanted to know if you could, it would be helpful if you would announce what slide you were on about. Slide 18. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyone else? Any uh, BAC folks, any questions? 
do keep in mind that this is the governor's preliminary budget. There are a number of people uh, pretty upset that he added a uh, level up to the BEF. I'll count myself among them. Um, and uh, there is work to do. So hopefully it gets better. Um, Ms. Lewis in the, in the attendee, can we um, turn her on please? Hi, Ms. Lewis, you're up. Hi, I have a question. Um, so looking at this uh, this increase, how what should we be advocating for for those of us who advocate to our legislators what, you know, the amounts that we're needing? So I see that um, we hey, said we, we, William Penn School District, we received like 8%. What should we advocate for? So that, is, percentage. An awesome, that is an awesome question, Ms. Lewis. Uh, my suggestion is that you advocate for level up to come back and mm -hmm. pulled out of uh, the BEF that they put it in um, and be increased. I believe Education Voters is asking for another $500 million to be added mm -hmm. to the education budget. Um, mm -hmm. so, uh, so those are the, that's the one and two uh, level up coming out of the BEF and the $500 million increase to the BEF. Um, the third thing would be plan con. That's an awesome question. Thank you so much, Ms. Lewis. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, Ms. Jertong? Yeah, I just wanna clarify for myself, um, with the level up money that got in, infused into the BEF, did they in, add that in using the new formula for distribution or did they look at how much money and just add random numbers so from what i heard they took last year's level up and added it to the bef base yep. Random numbers. Yep. and so it divided amongst everyone the okay. b uh, the the level up so it didn't go to the 100 schools like it did in the past it went to 501 school districts so the level up formula, what we got was what we got in level up, but what did the other schools who didn't get a level up last year, They what, how did they get their number? They got through BEF. They just got, we got BEF plus level up, they just got BEF. Okay. So we got level up, whatever level up we got last year, we just, we got it again, but they lumped it into BEF. We no, we didn't get it this year. Everyone got it this year. So yes, there is some additional money in BEF, but now it's that level up money and it's divided, I'm sorry, amongst everyone. So I guess another way to also look at this, Jan, is it's basically uh, you know, they the state has taken money and you're dividing it among many more people than you did previously. And the initial intent of level up, level up, excuse me, was to support the low wealth districts. And I believe Jennifer, correct me if I'm wrong, the state identified 100 districts that fell into that category. So the okay. thinking was that level up would be a tool that would be used to help support just those 100 districts. Right. This year, well, for next year, the projected budget does something different. It spreads the money among all districts. So I think the original intent is no longer there from my perspective. Right, and and my, my question was, how did they distribute it? What did they use as a formula to oh, distribute? They you used know? the standard funding formula. Okay, so they used the standard funding, but it, was it their new funding formula that they've been applying new money to, or is it the older funding formula where essentially it was you know random money for random people? All money goes through, all new money goes through the funding formula. Okay. which um, does, but at that rate, it was, it'll be 20 years. Right, it's still not enough, but I just wanted to know how they came up with these numbers that yeah. were distributed around the state. Yeah. Okay. So you. do you have another question? Your hand is up. All right, well, if you do, let us know. Sorry, no, it's, it was from before. Oh, no problem. Thank you, Ms. Lewis. Um, all right, okay. back to you, Bob. Great. Um, so 
other things for advisory committee members to keep in mind is are the facilities ma facilities master's plan, which if you were logged in a little early, you kind of saw the the future and, and what was coming up. Um, there's a link there that links into the the entire plan. Um, I'm not going to click it because it's very large and we can't go through that tonight. Um, but the the next thing coming up is S and P rating um, for our borrowings. Uh, our outlook was revised to stable in March 2022. Uh, the outlook revision reflects our view that budgetary performance has improved stabilizing the available fund balance after significant drawdowns in previous fis fiscal years uh, was the S&P's rationale. Um, in April, April, in next April, they will be um, reaching out and contacting us and creating a new rating. Um, so hopefully that will also be favorable. Um, as Jamie had mentioned before, any, any increase in rating could change interest rate by a quarter of a percent. So hopefully that, like I said, hopefully that goes well. So we are in preparation for that. Uh, future meetings, uh, as you can see, uh, the next BEAC meeting is on April 20th. Uh, and then as long as these dates are approved in future board meetings, this is the preliminary um, schedule and all meetings will be at 6 30. So were there any any questions about the S P rating? School board directors, any questions? BA uh, people, any questions? I don't have a question. I just have a comment. Um well maybe a question. So Bob, we, if our rating goes up and I, I just want to share this with everyone and our um, interest rate could go down a quarter of a percent. That could be huge because of the the, the number of dollars we're actually borrowing, and there it's and compounded over the thirty year interest, uh, thirty year loan that we would take out. That would be a, a significant amount of money that we would save if we can keep our rating or make our rating go up. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So as of today, a quarter of a point uh, over the thirty year life would save us ten million dollars. Thank you. Bob, I have a question. Uh, this is the month of March. We finalized our budget in June. So we only have a couple of months. Yes. Do you see any figures as to how, you know, there would be a gap in the budget? If so, what, what, what does it look like? I know you don't have exact figures, but you know yeah. somewhere an estimate. So as as of right now, we're still in the process of reviewing school and and department re requests um, to make our recommendation to to the board. Um, so it, it's still a little too early. And on top of that, that with the governor's being budget being preliminary, um, it's still very hard to tell. In addition, with the um, with the funding and the plan for the the potential plan um, to raise more capital to ramp up for the high school projects. Um, so we're still in the in the early stages. So right now I, I don't have an answer for that. Okay, thank you. All right, any questions? School board directors, BAC folks. Um, budget advisor and everyone, um, feel free to email um, at any time when you have any questions. Um, you don't have to wait for a meeting. Um, any and all thoughts are welcomed. Um, you can just um, hit reply and someone will get you an answer. Um, and uh, we appreciate you being here this evening. Anything else, Dr. B. Coates? No, uh, Ms. Hoff, I think, I think we're good. Thank you all very much. We greatly appreciate you all um, participating. The only other thing I'll say is please make sure that we share information with our community and with the public, because it's going to be very, very important that people are aware of what we're talking about as we go throughout the process and not wait until June and then show up. We really need people to work with us along the way. And Dr. Biko, uh, 
Bob, can you make sure that both of these presentations decks get up um, on, uh, on our website so folks can reference them? Sure, yes. All right, thank you all. Be safe out there. Almost TGIF. Have a great Good night, everyone.